hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Connecting with Michael Lee. This is episode number 23. And for those viewers who haven't met me before, my name is Sam Lee and I'm the founder of Connecting with Confidence. And I'll be the interviewer interviewing uh, Michael. How are we going today, Michael? Uh, fantastic, man. I'm uh, I'm in the time zone that's a little bit far behind you, so you're sort of at the end of your day, and I'm at the very beginning of mine. Yeah, uh, which is which is always fun. I, I it's one of the great things about the world, right? It's it's pretty cool. Uh, we have the same last name, but we're in different time zones. Yeah, yeah. I guess we found something common, mutual. Yeah, I guess so you're you're based in uh, USA, right? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm in Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm, I'm based here, but I, uh, I am uh, an African-American. Oh, you're an American. I'm a, oh, I'm a citizen of South Africa. I'm a citizen of the States. And I uh, was supposed to be in New York by now. But, of course, um, the situation of 2020 has changed plans around yeah. the world quite a bit. Totally, totally. Yeah, I guess. When now now it's time of pandemic, you can't really do much. So, uh, so yeah, tell me tell me a little bit about yourself, Michael. What's your what do you like doing outside of work? Uh, and you got any plans over the weekend? Well, uh, you know, outside of work, it's been a weird year, right? Because we haven't been able to spend time with people in person the way we normally do. So yep. I've, I've been spending a lot of time meeting people, actually, um, that wasn't necessarily for work, just like getting online and meeting new people on that could be eventually, you know, uh, work contacts, but not necessarily. Just I've been spending a lot of time this year doing that. And it's been really interesting just meeting, you know, new people uh, through this means like we're meeting now. And I've found that my my contact base has expanded, you know, so hugely with people I've never actually physically been in the same place with. Yeah. And sometimes I've forgotten, like, have I actually met that person in person, you know, physically or not? Um, and and there are some people that I've met physically one or two times, but I've met online like thirty times, you know. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so I think. This weekend, look, I'm I'm I, I'm actually having a human event. Um, you know, it's American Thanksgiving. Uh, I would say today, but mo uh, in in the states, it's still not really time for people to wake up. But it's American Thanksgiving uh, today, or coming coming onto it, and so I'm having some guests uh, on Saturday. None of them care that it's not the right day, but we're going to have a Thanksgiving, including my daughter who. Um, I'll be taking to a dad and daughter event and then we'll be going to have it. She'll be joining us for Thanksgiving. So we're having a Thanksgiving. Ah, that's great. So Thanksgiving is coming soon. So what is actually Thanksgiving in America? Uh, well, Thanksgiving's today in America. Like oh, okay. not today right now because everybody in the United States is sleeping. Yep. Right. But it's, but it's when they wake up, that's, it's Thanksgiving. Ah, happy Thanksgiving. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great. great American holiday. I think that 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 the world should actually enjoy because it's a great it's a great totally. evening, right? yeah. It's great. So, um, so what do you normally do in Thanksgiving? Well, normally, uh, you know, what Americans do is eat a lot of food with their families. Um, it's a weird year because a lot of people can't be with their families. So I don't know. I mean, people might be having like virtual Thanksgivings, like where they gather on Zoom like this, or uh normally normally though the traditionally it's it's like you know you travel to where your family is um i because i live uh, have lived in south africa a long time away from my american family yeah. um haven't really had a lot of thanksgivings with them for a long time mm -hmm. so i will definitely be calling in to their thanksgiving uh, today but they won't be having a big family thing it'll be also kind of everybody calling in so uh, normally, though, it's it's you eat a lot and because it's turkey. You sleep a lot afterwards and watch uh, American football games. That's what they <laughs> that's what they mostly do. Fair enough. That's great. Sounds great. So yeah. Um, so tell me about your uh, what what business do you do, Michael? So you're a, a master creative and innovative uh, coach. Uh, can you tell me more about your business? It's pretty it's pretty uh, creative to, to us to me. So um, can you tell me a bit about your, what you do as a business and how does it work? Sure, man. Uh, 
so essentially I work with people and organizations to up their ability to be creative. The word ability is funny though, because they, they you know, human beings were born with creativity as our greatest strength. It's, it's our greatest, one of our greatest assets that we have as humans and all of us have it. So what happens though, is as we get older, humans tend to lose our access to creativity and therefore the idea of innovating, of creating new, you know, things, new products, new ways of living, new ways of being, all of that gets funneled under and we start to, you know, track ourselves into certain ways of living. And the, the trick of, you know, of coaching a, a person or an organization into better creativity and innovation, you know, success is, it's fairly simple. It's you, you have to get the people to understand that as long as they are stuck on being the person that they came into the room as, they're never going to get more creative because they're going to simply repeat the kind of ideas that a person with their personality would get in order to get new ideas, you know, in order to succeed with new innovations. An individual needs to innovate themselves and a team needs the individuals on it to innovate themselves. And without that, you know, there's really not much hope for, for a great expansion. You're going to just get a little better and, and, and make a little bit of progress. So the job of a coach or a trainer is to, is just to show people the right, you know, tricks and, and techniques to open up their willingness to shift who they are to open up their ability to be a more impactful, you know, innovator by simply getting them to stop being addicted or, or holding on to who they think they are. And so be allowing oneself to transform oneself into someone else more flexibly. It's called adaptability and it's been predicted as the skill that's needed most in business uh, for a long time already. And there's, and there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of scholarship around it. There's even a new measurement tool for adaptability. So what needs to happen, you know, is people need to actually adapt. And a lot of people are scared to adapt. So you find, especially with the pandemic, it's an opportunity to adapt. It's, it's been given as an opportunity and yet people don't embrace that opportunity because they don't want to shift. They are scared to, and it's understandable. People are afraid of change right? People are afraid of uncertainty. And yet uncertainty really is just an imaginary thing in our heads. It's an opinion. It's a thought. It's not a thing, you know? So uh, what I do is really help people and organizations cope with the fact that uncertainty is, is a gift and something that they need to embrace and, and, you know, really um, use to their benefit. Oh, interesting. So I guess in a nutshell, you basically you, you help unleash people's creativity out to make them uh, start their own business. Would you would you say? Start their well, own business. It could be to start their own business. It could be for someone who's already been running a business for a long time. Um, it 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 is very much you know helping people to unleash that, and also companies or organizations that exist. So yes, it could be to start a new business. It could be to pivot that business. It could be simply just in a general way to open up an experience of freedom yeah. for that person. You know, uh, people who feel stuck with an idea, it's usually because they don't have freedom around themselves, not around the idea. Um, and people that generally have good ideas but get stuck on, you know, one particular one or have what is often called writer's block. That, you know, is, is also usually related <clears throat> to their relationship to that idea. So if, if a person, you know, might generally not have writer's block, but they have writer's block around a particular thing, it's very likely that there's a relationship issue around that person's relationship to that idea, you know, and maybe normally they, they don't have that experience, but with this idea they do, and that's the place to look. It's the same if they want to start a new business and they're not starting it. What is their relationship to that new business? You know, 
um, what what is how do they see that business uh, differently than other activities? So so it's not just to start a new business, but that would certainly be one function. Yeah. One function. Oh, that sounds great. Nice. So, um, what made you start this career? So, how did you find out about this idea, and how did you? Uh, is it just out of the ordinary, or you had that in mind as a passion? <clears throat> Uh, it's fairly out of the ordinary, but it might not be forever. I have been a creative professional uh, my entire adult life. I, I've worked as a filmmaker, yep. I've directed, produced, written on mostly factual TV, and that means like documentaries and reality shows and yep. things like that. Yep. Uh, I... Uh, well, I wrote a couple of novels when I was young and we ran a literary magazine that had a lot of impact. But the point is really that I've worked as a creative professional um, for the last 25 years. And along the way, I've taught at a couple of um, programs which were, you know, uh, film schools and, 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 and um, TV schools and stuff. And eventually started one that I was hired to start called the Academy of Sound, uh, sorry, the Academy of Screen Arts, uh, which was part of a, a sound engineering school that essentially we needed to write the whole curriculum. So part of the curriculum we wrote was a creativity training that was outside of any specific uh, knowledge. Like it wasn't a, you know, for directors, it was just creativity. And in doing that, I started to read a lot around the process of creativity and, and how it works and started to learn a lot about how creativity, uh, you know, actually works in human beings. So over the past eight to 10 years, that work for the school, you know, developed forward until it became much bigger than what the school needed. So about two years ago i set out to bring the training into the into the normal world i guess you'd say so the uh be able to bring it to people in business uh people who are artists people who uh are working in companies bring it to companies so it's been that kind of process and being able to really um test that first you know does it work on an entrepreneur does it work on uh, a professional artist, the kind of technique that I've developed, and yes, it does. And so the, over the past two years, I've delivered it to a lot of people who um, have, have, have really benefited from the process that we use. That's great. Nice. Wow, that's something new. Like, like I've never heard of that before, but it's, it's actually uh looks like something you think out of the box of uh, which is very good so yeah michael um so what, what do you like to do outside of work like what's your hobbies and things like that well like i said it's been a weird year for that right because yeah. we, you know we haven't been able to gather together in in in, in physical form um so like i said i've spent a lot of time my hobby has become people it's been just connecting with people and just being, just having conversations with people has become like a, a, a game or a hobby or something I do that that is fun. <laughs> because I've spent, look, I, I don't live with anybody. I live with my landlord in another part of uh, a house. We have a nice, lovely, this isn't where I live. Um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, so, you know, we have a lovely, grounds here with beautiful garden and very occasionally someone will come over and, and, and swim in the pool or sit around with us in the garden. But mostly, you know, people don't, aren't physically connected even still after all this time. And so I spent a lot of time, I've got my dogs here and I spent a lot of time with them, taking them for walks or, or, or uh, just watching them fight each other. But the, the main thing I've been doing for a hobby this year is really talking to people, just hearing what people have to say. Mm -hmm. um, getting to know a lot of different kind of people, you know, hearing about what they love and what they're dealing with, you know, and and that's been really amazing. Actually, I think it's one of the big benefits of 2020. You know, and COVID has been 
the ability to actually stop and notice each other. Um, okay. So I guess my hobby right now is people. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I guess if you when you connect with more people, I guess it becomes a skill, which is good. So yeah, um, Michael, yeah, that brings me to the next question. So how do you build better relationships with people? So you can have a lot of people. What's the secret behind building better relationships with people? I, I didn't hear quite what you said. How the secret behind? But yeah, what's the secret behind uh, like uh, connecting with people? Like how, how do you do it? How do you build be, uh, positive relationships with people? What is, what's, what's some skill and techniques that you would say you, you do? Well, I mean, two things, right? So what I do is more about creative thinking and, and how the people think better and the and the main way to deal with that is to get people to be willing to let go of who they are right and and that's a different process than than building relationships with them because i think to build a relationship with a person the main thing you need to do is you need to actually listen to them you know uh you need to hear what they have to say and then meet them there where they are yeah. Um, you know, you have to, you don't, you don't want to try to criticize or change somebody uh, if you want to connect with them. Yeah. And yet, what really excites them the most in terms of training, in terms of creativity, is when you do give them the opportunity to shift themselves, to change something, to become more, you know, powerful, to become uh, freer of their own uh, addiction to themselves or their own belief that they, that who they are right now is important because who they are right now isn't, uh, isn't gonna help them get different ideas that they're looking for. So it's interesting because I think to connect with a person you need to really respect who they are right now. But in order to, uh, in order to really help a person shift and change and grow, you have to be able to support them in not being who they are right now. Um, and there's not contradiction there because I think, first of all, in order to not be who you are right now, you have to accept who you are right now. Mm. You know, it's very important that you accept and understand who you are at this moment yep. in order to, right, in order to actually be able to shift it that's critically important. So that's not a contradiction, but I guess the step is in order to really connect with somebody, you have to first accept them and you first see them and hear them. And then in order to really provide them with support and power and shifting, you need to be able to then provide them with that kind of willingness to let go of the person they are. Well said. So that's, that's pretty good. Like, I guess what you said was uh, you have to listen, you have to set, put it up. So in order to, um, yeah, to connect with them, I guess. Um, that's, that's, really, that's a really good uh, thing that I learned from you. And yeah, that's great. So yeah, Michael, uh, that brings me to the last question. How do we find out more about you? How, how, what's your website? What's your, are, you on, are you active on social media? Yeah, look, I, I, very much. I'm primarily a, a LinkedIn kid. Yeah. Uh, I tried other ones and I just don't seem to get very far with them. Although TikTok is a lot of fun, but yeah. <laughs> for now, I think the best thing to do would be to reach out to me on LinkedIn under my name, Michael Lee, yeah. um, which is easy because it's the same surname as you have. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, but you can find me directly on LinkedIn. The the slash is Michael Lee Creativity. Yeah. Uh, there's an event we're having which I really want to encourage people to come to, although. If you're in Australia, it's a terrible time. Mm. Uh, but coming this Tuesday, I don't know if you know about Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday. Uh, a lot of people don't, right? It's great that you do. Uh, you know, we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday and I guess Social Saturday now. It's just like endless the number of days they're trying to get people to buy things. Mm. So there's a day on Tuesday called Giving Tuesday and what I'm doing with that day is I'm trying to actually promote the fact that it's a giving day. So I'm giving away my training course, uh, which is $350 course normally. And I'm giving it away 
not to you though. If you come to the event, you'll win it for an entrepreneur to have and use. So I'm giving it away to other people, not to the people that come to the event. It's encouraging them to be given, in other words. Um, so we all get to be giving together. And I, I uh, in order to get to that event, you'd have to go on Facebook. Um, I can give you the <clears throat> the link for that if you could post it on this on this uh, on this broadcast at the end. Yeah, later on, I will. It's a long it's a long link, you know. But if you go onto LinkedIn, uh, the event is is called uh, the event is called How to Dance with Uncertainty. So what we're going to do at that event is we're going to take something that you're uncertain about, something that might be preventing you from making progress, and actually teach you to not just uh, get over the uncertainty, but to actually dance with the uncertainty, to appreciate the uncertainty, to use it as a benefit rather than a negative, right? So that's what we're looking for uh, in that event from, you know, people want to dance with uncertainty and we will actually dance. There will actually be dancing. Sounds great. And do you have a website? Uh, Michael, that, uh, that new. do you have a website but we're uh we're aborting it right now because it's being rebuilt so the best thing to do is to go to bit.ly uh slash inativity i double n o t i v i t y bit.ly slash inativity and that will give you access to a lot of the opportunities uh to do various things that we do and some explanations around how it works Okay, sounds great. That's cool. So yeah, later on, I'll be uploading your this video along with your links, especially your Facebook, your LinkedIn, and your website. So I can share with the viewers. So yeah, uh, viewers, uh, you know how to connect with Michael Lee. Uh, you can connect with him through LinkedIn as well as website and on Facebook as well with this event. Check him out. He's a, he's a great guy. And uh, yeah, Michael, that, that draws to the end of the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in the future. And good luck with everything in your business. Thanks, Sam. It's been a pleasure to uh, to, to chat with you. And I'm, again, I love your surname. I think you just got the best surname. That is. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, have a good one. Cool. Thank you. No worries. <laughs>